All right, good to know. All right, everyone. Well, I am so excited to be speaking at OtherCon again. Uh, my name is Zira. I like any pronouns as long as they're non-binary, Zers, they, them, am, whatever. Uh, I hope everyone else is enjoying OtherCon 2022 so far. Uh, today's lecture will probably also feature my pet diamond doves in the background. Uh, their names are Blue, Silver, and Amatrine, and they like talking when I'm talking, so you'll likely hear them cooing away. Don't mind them. And just a fair warning, I have an ultra-powerful case of ADHD, and I get distracted very easily, so I'm going to spend most of this time reading off my notes. So now on to the good stuff. Um, I want to open with some audience engagement, so feel free to answer here. I'm mostly looking for a raise of hands kind of deal. Uh, how many of you in attendance today are fiction kin or fiction hearted or have a sin path or fiction or a fictive or a heart home or your identity is otherwise impacted by fiction? All right, rock on. So it looks like we've got a few, quite a few in here. All right, so hopefully something I have to say can be meaningful for you guys. Um, and then I was also wondering uh, how many of you today have ever practiced pop culture inspired things before? Uh, when I ask that, I'm including magic of all types, something spiritual or religious like praying or building an altar, as well as secular stuff that impacts your life somehow, like using a quote from your favorite movie to motivate you, just anything inspired by pop culture. All right, rock on. So it looks like I'm not alone here. <laughs> all right. Good to see. Again, I hope something I have to say can be valuable for you guys. Um, as for me, I'm an eclectic witch that has always sort of practiced pop culture magic and paganism without really realizing that that's what I was doing. Um, I have a few different fictional kin types that play into it. Uh, the most relevant to this would probably be my biggest sin path, uh, Raven from the Teen Titans and follower of Azar. Uh, the same spiritual leader as her. Um, Azeroth itself is actually a heart home for me as well. And I'm also Harrow Hark Nonagesimus from the Locked Tomb book series, uh, a rather religious leader on my homeworld and eventually a servant directly under the man we called God. It's a long story. Necromancy is involved, and ironically, there are some areas where I'm better at it in this life than I was in that one. <laughs> All right. Um, spiritual beliefs affect my other kin identities a great deal because the very basis of my beliefs in my identity is centered around my understanding of the universe or how many versions of the universe there are and reincarnation. But you don't have to be a spiritual other kin to incorporate pop culture into your life. Have you ever heard a line in a movie about human nature or self-identifying that just resonated with you so much you absorbed it into your understanding of our world as it is here and now? Pop culture has the potential to touch all of our lives in this way, whether or not it's from a source you're kin with, but I'll be the first to tell you that it's a lot harder when you remember the exact moment it was said in your source. Now, I'm going to be honest, that secular sort of impact is too general to cover entirely. I could give 10 separate hour-long panels on fandom and how it impacts people's lives and builds connection and community and still barely scratch the surface. The bulk of this panel will cover the more spiritual or magical side of things. Um, I'm not here to tell you what to practice or what to believe, but I'd like to share some of my personal experiences with the intersection of fiction, kinity, and spirituality, uh, as well as in explore the various forms of pop culture practices I've seen. This panel isn't the discussion of what I personally believe, though I could probably make that very interesting. I think it's even more interesting to look at it from a wider lens and talk about the plethora of ways I've seen people interacting with this identity and those practices. Um, I also took a survey that got results from 95 people that we'll be taking a look at. A lot of the fun brainstorming stuff is wrapped up in the survey questions because my survey covered a lot of ground and people covered a lot of ideas in the freeform responses. So what exactly are pop culture practices? I chose the word practice because it's intentionally vague. A practice is something that you do sometimes once in your life and sometimes every day for years. 
And over time, it's something that changes, evolves, gets better, gets more meaningful, or just gets consistent. It's a relatively new thing in the public consciousness, gaining traction, especially in the past 10 years that I've noticed. The pop culture part comes from the phrase popular culture, and it used to mean something that everybody was vaguely aware of, like in the common collective consciousness. But as languages do, it changed and it evolved. What's popular changed, what's in the culture changed, even over just the past couple decades. Recently, it kind of came to mean modern fiction. The exact definition will be discussed later because it was a question on the survey. Nowadays, pop culture practice means taking inspiration from pop culture sources, which can include TV shows, movies, comic books, podcasts, tabletop RPGs, just anything available for public consumption. Uh, popular culture generally refers to the more well-known media, but kinity and spirituality alike aren't bound by how many people know about it. So you might take elements from anything as massive as DC Comics or something as obscure as your favorite indie webcomic and everything in between. So forms of pop culture practice you might have heard of. Uh, there is a religious group known as the Jedi Church, a group of people who practice a philosophy, sometimes termed a religion, uh, based on the belief of the Jedi in the Star Wars franchise. Jediism has been recently acknowledged as an official religion in the New Zealand consensus. Uh, this one's been in public knowledge since 2001. Uh, there's also reality shifting, a trend on TikTok where people sort of insert themselves into a pop culture universe. Um, using merchandise from a pop culture source in spell working, or a line from pop culture in a spell. Not gonna lie, I have absolutely used Azeroth Metreon Zinthos as a mantra while meditating, and it is nice. Um, when we talk about pop culture, for those of us in the fiction kin community, it often goes a step beyond fandom and casual consumption. Doing things that other people do just for fun can become a way to validate core aspects of our identity. Watching a TV show and watching those we knew and loved in our source can become a way for us to reconnect with those we've lost. I have multiple kin types from Yu-Gi-Oh! and playing the game with my favorite strategies using some of the cards I played with in that world is both fun and affirming and let me tell you it's nice to get to play and have fun in this life without worrying about somebody losing their soul. So now that we've got a general idea of it, let's get specific. Uh, <laughs> yes, those are my birds. Um, the two most common forms of pop culture practices are pop culture paganism and pop culture witchcraft. Both of these are umbrella terms that encompass a wide range of experiences. There's a huge variety of ways to practice with a side of pop culture. It's different for everyone. Everyone has different sources they draw in and different ways that they incorporate it into their practices. There's not really any one set right or wrong way to do it because it's not a specific denomination or belief system. Pop culture practitioners are usually pretty unique in their path. As a group and a general term, it's entirely unstructured though an individual might have their own kind of structure from either the source material or their own personal beliefs or their unverified personal gnosis. Um, pop culture paganism uses the term paganism very loosely. If anything, I think it's more like a polytheistic gnosticism than a pagan framework, but it's the most agreed upon term for a spiritual belief or worldview or worship that involves pop culture beings in some way deities, myths, worldviews, philosophies, creation myths. Uh, usually it's used to mean the worship of pop culture specific deities, but it can also be something like house spirits from a source, or having spirit guides that are creatures from a pop culture world, or a mythology that one believes in. Pop culture witchcraft is a little more on the nose. It describes using elements of pop culture in magic, spellworking, divination, energy work, astral projection, or other crafts with a magical bend. There's a broad spectrum of how the elements are used. It can be anything from general symbolism, like using a specific mineral to embody traits of a Steven Universe character of the same mineral's name, to taking a ritual for a specific outcome in the source and directly copying the entire thing in your life here on Earth 
to get that same result. It can mean using spells, rituals, festivals, invocations, chants, or tools in any way associated with you doing magic that ties to a canon source. Though these two often overlap, one is not necessary for the other. Just like with any magic, you can have religiously charged or secular spells, and you can have beliefs in gods without necessarily practicing magic about it. Sure, you can have them intertwined in your own practice and nobody will stop you, but one is not necessarily a prerequisite for the other. And then there's the utterly secular side of things. Secular practices are things people do without it being influenced by religion or without having a religious reason to do it. Here are some examples. Using a quote from pop culture as a chant for luck, decorating your space with merchandise, or holding superstitions that don't really have a religious bias, but came from some philosophies in a piece of fiction. It can mean pondering or even believing a source's philosophy, celebrating holidays you read about in a book, collecting things for fiction can euphoria, practicing rituals or habits from your canon, the list goes on and on. The ways that people celebrate a piece of pop culture that really resonates them or just delights them are as varied as the people who make up a fandom. So now that we know what we're talking about, I thought I would illustrate some aspects of this stuff by briefly touching on some of my personal experiences. I've been meditating since I was 12 years old, both as a coping mechanism and a spiritual practice, and that's how a lot of this started for me. I stumbled on it entirely by accident. I'm not even sure if the term pop culture paganism existed 17 years ago. But Raven appeared to me in meditations, we talked, and she became a sort of spirit guide for me. Through her, I always felt connected to the Azerithian sp spirituality, but it didn't get genuinely spiritual for me until I got into the habit of using her high priestess's name in place of God, like, oh God, uh, oh Azar instead. Um, kind of as a fandom reference, and kind of because the people at my mother's church didn't like me saying, oh my God. And then one day I said, oh, Azar, and Azar actually answered. Uh, I've been following her ever since. I think it's funny that, um, for those of you who don't know, I do have a very strong kin type of Blue Diamond from Steven Universe. And I think it's also funny that Rose Quartz of the Steven Universe world came to me in a meditation months before I discovered I was Blue Diamond. And I had a vision with her, and when I asked her, what does this mean? She kind of just smiled and told me, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, this was before the show revealed her passion for things growing and changing and gems becoming something that can learn. And now I look back on that and I think she was excited to see how I, as someone that she knew so well at the beginning of her life, would have grown and changed in this life as a human. But anyways, not everyone who practices these things has such personal ties to such specific independent entities. My experience is far from the only way to do things, but after all this happened and I was on the witchy side of Tumblr, um, I stumbled on the term pop culture magic and everything sort of fell into place and I found out that I was not the only one living life on this planet with the magical and spiritual side of fandom. Everyone here knows how great it feels to be validated and find out you're not alone in your wildest experiences, I'm sure. It was amazing to find a community in that. So <clears throat> now I have a survey that I'd like to go over some results from. There were a lot of freeform answers so people could fill in their, <laughs> I like that comment, sorry. A church not allowing you to use, oh my God, backfired hard, amen to that. Um, so I have this, survey that I had running via Google Forms from February 2022 through just this month when I started analyzing the data. I advertised the survey as best I knew how. I'm going to be honest, my circle is fairly small, but I reached out to those I knew who had bigger followings in witchcraft communities, as well as through various kin discord chat rooms, and I posted a link on my Tumblr for magical stuff and getting the word out that way. All told, there were 95 responses. The survey was specifically geared towards those who currently practiced or have in the past practiced some kind of pop culture inspired path. I separated it into three sections, about you, about your practices, and about your beliefs. 
to make sure these results as comfortable as I could, I gave survey takers the option to have me leave their specific answers out of the panel and asked those who were comfortable with me sharing their answers if they were okay with being mentioned by name, but almost half of them requested to stay anonymous and that's perfectly fine, I will respect that. I'm gonna take a drink of water, give me just a moment. I see someone mentioning using Pokemon cards and that was actually mentioned on the survey quite a lot um, using merchandise cards, particularly for divination but there was quite a lot of mention of them being used as other things like offerings, decorating their altars. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, to, so first and foremost, I asked respondents to define pop culture practices as they understand it. Most of the answers specified either magical workings or spiritual or religious beliefs. Interestingly, most answers only specified one or the other, but there were a few outliers. Poppy defined it as any spiritual, in the loosest sense of that word, practice that incorporates any element from pop culture, be that spirits and deities or, and I really like the specification, lessons and metaphors. Another respondent mentions the application and implementation of beliefs related to pop culture. There were also <coughs> specific mentions of methodology, symbolism, and concepts taken from pop culture into one's practice. This one was unique the intertwining of one's practice with the energy currents and aspects of pop culture up to working with those universes and their magic. And of course, this response holds true. I think it looks different for everyone because there are a myriad of ways to worship. Another had a fun way of looking at it, taking the idea of fiction and forming our reality quite literally. <laughs> a few responses specify recent media. Um, there was excellent differentiation in this response. Any practice that includes what is considered pop culture as opposed to what might be considered classical culture. And also in this one, either viewing traditional deities as modern characters or viewing them as character or viewing the characters as spirits or deities on their own. Um, and then next I asked, what do you consider a pop culture practice? This one was a check all that apply with several different options. Uh, the most common response with 88 responses comprising almost 93% of respondents said that it was believing in the existence of deities and mythical figures from pop culture. With 87 responses, about 92% selected using symbolism from a pop culture source. There were 82 responses for incorporating ideas into your worldview. 80% or 80 answers, still about 84% selected following a religion from a pop culture source. I also had a fill-in other option. Uh, there was a trend on that where people specifically mentioned sp spirits or deities from pop culture sources. And some of the more unique write-ins were soul bonding. Uh, for those unfamiliar, that's normally considered a voluntary connection one establishes to a character or being, <coughs> typically of a very deep and spiritual nature. Someone else said it's something that's open to everyone. <coughs> a write in said any form of reblog to cast spells. Uh, that's for the Tumblr crowd, I'm sure. Um, there was one that said making characters that aren't deities in their source into deities in your practice, which I thought was a really interesting way of uh, acting on that. And then there was working with spirits that aren't considered traditional to work with, using pop culture interpretations of existing practices. And someone else said incorporating recipes. Not sure if that meant the recipes of a spell, the steps involved, or actual cooking, but I might have to try this in the literal food definition. Yes, uh, Dervish mentioned that it can always be, it can also be psychological. Uh, the definition is very loose and has branched off a couple times. Absolutely true. So on the survey, I then asked if they're open about their pop culture practices or not. This was a simple yes or no with a third option that said only in certain situations. And the vast majority said only in certain situations with 74%. Uh, with the rest pretty evenly split between yes <coughs> and, <coughs> and no at just 12.6% and 13.7% respectively. Uh, I then asked why or why not. This was an optional free form answer. 
And unfortunately, there was a very common theme of judgment and mockery from others. As someone pointed out, safety is very important. Multiple people aren't open about it because it simply didn't come up in conversation. Someone else said not everyone needs to know, which is a super valid point. Um, but there were good reasons for people to be open about it too. This person's reason was because I want others to know it's okay to work with pop culture magic and paganism, as well as not feel ostracized when they can't connect to traditional deities. This person brought up an interesting nuance regarding others' judgment. Since I only sometimes use elements and symbolism from pop culture in my practice, it's not something that others tend to criticize or judge in contrast with people who follow a religion from a pop culture source. A storm made the point that I'm not hurting anyone and maybe I can help lay a precedence for others to come who would like to look into incorporating it into their own practices. So there's a lot of people saying that it sets an example for others who might have similar beliefs. This person's commentary is probably pretty relatable for us. Um, they said, it depends on whether or not I feel supported by the particular community space I'm in. In a similar vein of thought, someone said, but it's a case by case basis thing. Having to feel out where it might give me grief for no reason other than people being mean and refusing to think too long about stuff outside their own bubble. Uh, this one made a very good point. I don't feel like it would do me or anyone else any good to argue about the validity of my practices with random strangers. And this person made a very good point. I see pop culture as budding beliefs. There is a start for everything, so I think that pop culture beliefs have that structure for more. And I think it's going to be interesting in the coming years to see how it spreads and grows and develops and what kind of communities spring out of these beliefs. So the next question was, what do you think your practice has in common with others? About half answered with the simple overarching fact that it's drawn from pop culture. I liked the insight in this answer. In regards to other practices overall, I'd say the visualization of another entity that I can speak to and receive feedback from is very common across many practices of modern, ancient, and fictional origin. And that seems to be absolutely true. A cipher was uncertain, but as a fan as well as fiction kin, her answer really resonated with me. I suppose our commonality is that we find deeper meaning from fictional sources, and that can in turn give us our own power. And then another write-in said, spiritual belief in a power that lends me mental slash spiritual strength and hope. Quite a few answers, maybe 10 to 20%, were from folks that stated they weren't in touch with others or communities that practice pop culture things, so they just didn't know. On the subject of pop culture versus non-pop culture, Jay's response is really beautiful. I have a relationship with some non-pop culture paganism entities, and other than their specific customs, I go about it the same. The source of the practice is the only real difference, and it's the same with this varied, this world-based practice, after all. A comedic will practice different than a North practitioner in places, but when it comes down to it, it's still the same kind of experience. And then Jay goes on to say, I, I share universal origins and some basics of each practice with other people specifically, but more broadly, the same thing as for option one. We all light up when our spells work. We have warmth in our hearts when we interact with our spirits, etc. Things will vary depending on what works for everyone and source world, but I feel it connects us at least like this. Lupin's response here was very relatable. A lot of searching and finding what works for us. That's true for most of us, yeah. Um, this one mentioned something I hadn't even considered. Probably a lot of people are approaching it from a chaos magic perspective. Now, I'm not a chaos myself, but I know enough about chaos magic theory to see where they connect, because a lot of chaos magic throws off tradition and embraces individuality. And then someone else said, we're all worshiping slash practicing in ways that are not the norm as in all pagans slash witches, etc., are resisting dominant religion slash culture by practicing. There was this answer. I think a lot of us are very good at thinking outside the box. Absolutely the case. So then I asked them if there was anything about their practice that was unique to them individually. Several people listed the specific piece of pop culture they draw from or the obscurity from which they draw. Um, lots of people contemplated the specific ways they incorporate their practice, like specific rituals or specific deities. 
A couple mentioned writing their own prayers and rituals, which of course would be completely unique to them and props to people who can do that. Um, there were also a couple who stated that they follow a non-pop culture structured religion while also practicing pop culture and pointing out how rare that is, which, I mean, obviously there were two or more people who answered to that, so maybe it's not quite as unique as they think, but it does seem to be true that it's a very rare experience from what I've seen. A couple comments made the point, as that saying goes, there's nothing new under the sun, with Melanin Huntress saying it's the next stage of folk magic, which I think is a parallel worth exploring, but my own education is too incomplete for me to be the one to do it. Aw, Dove, I'm glad to hear that your cat is chilling. I'm glad he, he likes my voice. My doves like it too, apparently. Um, so, again, back to unique responses. Um, one response said, I work from memories of one of my kin types. There God, there's gods I remember who don't exist in canon, meaning I've never seen anyone who works with them. Which, you know, any one of us who is canon divergent can probably relate to that in some way, even if it's not necessarily religious. Regent said, the format of my practice is definitely altered by the fictional universe or character in person I'm drawing from on a case-by-case -case basis. I have literally composed prayers in fictional, fictional languages for my gods and such. And major props to anyone who can compose prayers in a conlang because, oh my god. Um, I'm sure some of the people in this panel can relate to their point. Fiction can also factors into it a great deal. Working with those universes feels more like home than this one. I know I relate. And I asked, how did you discover pop culture practices? This was a select all that apply answer with four or five different answers. Um, the most common selection out of the options I provided with 76 of 95 responses was online communities. Two thirds with 67 out of 95 selected self-discovery. Me too, folks. Um, a little over half said it was inspired by practices in the media itself. A couple said that people they know introduced them. And I completely relate to the person who started doing it as a tongue-in-cheek thing until they found out that people actually do that. Because, yeah, that's exactly what happened to me with Azart. Kind of a funny story. And then I asked, how long have you been practicing? More than a third were in the one to three year stage. A quarter responded that it's been four to six years. Less than one year only got 17% of the participants, and about the final 20% were in the range of seven years or more. I asked, how frequently do you practice with pop culture? I, pro I provided options for daily, weekly, monthly, once a year or less, and an option for it varies because I know I don't have a set schedule myself, so it would be unfair to expect people to come up with one consistent answer. Just under half said it varies. That makes sense, considering most of us are either building our own belief system or working with systems that have fairly limited lore, so we don't have a strict religious schedule to keep. Not to mention the demands modern living tends to make on people's time and energy. The next common response had about 20% saying daily. The last quarter was a range of answers, including once a year or less, a few times a year, monthly and weekly. Only six respondents out of the 95 said they practice once a year or less. So then I asked what determines how often they practice. This one was a free response, completely optional, and the most common thread in at least 90% of responses was that it depends on the circumstances in one life like spoon count or free time they have or when they felt called to engage. Shout out to my fellow spoonies, I feel you and you will receive no judgment from me. About a third said it's determined by what times one feels inspiration to do so. Um, my dear friend Link said it depends on how often I think of them. None of my deities demand active worship, they seem content with what I do currently. I thought that was refreshing to see in a culture where, let's be real, the dominant religion does have a lot of demands on people's time and energy. A handful pointed out something I hadn't considered in that there's a difference between having something affect your daily life based on your beliefs 
versus when you're actively doing something like praying, casting a spell, or otherwise engaging with that aspect of your life specifically. That's a very fair point. Um, this response exemplified that trend very nicely. There are passive parts of my practice that remain constant. A shrine I keep, jewelry and charms I keep on me, trying to live the values of my source media, etc. Other parts of my practice, like divination and magical workings, are more infrequent. The struggle to prioritize those parts of my practice amongst all the other priorities in my life is very real. Very relatable. And then I, I asked, what sources of pop culture do you draw from? This was a select all that apply question with an optional write-in that they can add. Video games took an early lead in the first week of the survey, then tied with TV shows and books further into March. The trend stayed pretty stable. This week, the data had nearly two-thirds at 65% selecting video games. Books were very close behind at 60%, and then TV shows had almost 55% of people selecting it. A couple of the more unique write-ins were tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons, and there were two separate write-ins that said web series, and I thought that was interesting. I asked, do you consider obscure media to be pop culture? No was an option, I promise, but nobody selected it. Nearly two thirds said yes, and the remaining third of the answers was split between depend or depends on how obscure was twice as common as people selecting sometimes. I asked, is your practice associated with an other can identity? Nearly half at 40% said no. A third said yes. 16% were in the middle of the road and said somewhat, and the rest selected the option for unsure. I asked, is your practice associated with a fictive? This was less common in the surveyed crowd than other Kennedy because 54% said no, though the second most common response was not sure at nearly 16%, and just over 13% said somewhat, and only 17% said yes. I asked, to what extent does it impact your life? Options were given in degrees ranging from it doesn't impact my life in any way to it's a major part of my identity. We got a pretty even split across all five options. About a third said it makes a fair impact. About a fourth said only in a minor way. A fifth said it's a major part of my identity. 15% said the impact is extensive and less than 10% said it, it didn't impact their life in any way. So as an optional write-in, I said, please feel free to list any and all specific pop culture sources you draw from, because this is something I really wanted to look at. There were at least four mentions of the Elder Scrolls video game series, three mentions of His Dark Materials series, two mentions of Star Trek and Homestuck each, and there were also repeats of the Zelda series, My Little Pony, Magnus Archives, Steven Universe, Represent, uh, Pokemon, Tabletop RPGs, Lord of the Rings trilogy, various anime, and Harry Potter. More unique ones were music, which, yeah, that's a part of pop culture that probably got neglected in this survey, but music is absolutely a part of pop culture. And someone else said creepypastas, which actually had two separate answers, but that was one I'd never seen mentioned before, so that caught me off guard. But it's really cool to see people connecting in such a way with a piece of internet history like that. And then I asked, are your practices secular, religious, spiritual, and or philosophical? It was a select all that apply. Just about 75% said spiritual, half selected religious, and both secular and philosophical were selected by about 40%. None of the above was an option, but none of the respondents selected it. Do you practice magic? Two thirds said yes, 25% said somewhat, and only 8% said no. I asked how. There were lots of answers mentioning using merchandise cards used as divination tools. Uh, there were lots of people incorporating specific elements into their own customized spells rather than following a rigid ritual. Astrid specifies sometimes she just straight up casts the exact same spell she saw. There were two or three mentions of energy work. One person said, I try to take practices from mainstream paganism, exempli gratia, candle magic, sigil design slash spell work, meditation, and choose or modify them to suit the deity I'm trying to reach. So the next question asked, 
Do you hold any religious or spiritual beliefs inspired by, based on, or incorporating pop culture deities, worldview, morality, myths, or other religious slash spiritual elements? A solid 60% said yes, less than 8% said no, and the remaining third said somewhat. I gave them the option to explain more if they'd like in a long form answer. And there was a pretty strong presence of multiverse theory impacting this one. I got two mentions of the system in Neil Gaiman's novel, American Gods, which is actually really fitting for a discussion of pop culture paganism. For those unfamiliar, some of the novel's world building is about how deities get their power from people believing in them or worshiping them. And that's often a staple in people's theory of how deities in a book or TV show on this world can become powerful deities that can be worshipped and prayed to for communion and desired results in one life. Your belief powers that. So there was also some very thought-provoking responses from Swan. I believe that the divide between real and not real is a sacred mystery that should be contemplated and explored. Simultaneously being real and thus a safe outlet for a human person's feelings and real enough to worship and get a response from is mysterious, holy, and possible in my eyes. Orla said, I believe pop culture texts are real in the same way that all other texts are real, which is to say existing on the border between the poetic and the literal. So I don't really think that religious slash spiritual elements can exist inherently outside of the bounded existence of a text, but that all texts necessarily have pathways into them by the simple nature of being texts, and that we can render these paths by slash multidirectional through skillful work, perhaps even to the point where the border between the text and the not text begins to appear permeable. Animism was also mentioned here, and a couple other responses as well. And then I asked, what elements of pop culture do you use in your practice? This was another one where they could select multiple checkboxes. In first place, deities was marked in nearly three quarters of the responses. About two thirds selected beliefs and worldviews, and almost two thirds selected characters. Just over half selected philosophies and thought exercises, which surprised me personally because I didn't know other people even paid attention to the philosophies in fiction. Just less than half selected theme music, which was also a surprise and quite a delight. I was personally quite surprised at how many specific quotes that one got selected in over 50% of responses. And the least common response was Tulpas at 8.4%, followed by Servitors at 9.5%. After that, I had an open-ended question where I asked for any other elements that I might have missed, and here they could type as much as they liked. Poppy gave some examples with tangibly real elements that, as far as we know, don't exist in our world. In, in po Poppy's case, dust from his dark materials, but other examples could include the secret fire from Hellboy, Z space from Animorphs, I'm not sure about how to pronounce this, Sahelu from Avatar, and so on. Others brought up creatures and mythical creatures in the works of fiction, fictional languages and alphabets, fan fiction and incorporating others headcanon, and for me personally, as both a fan fiction reader and a fan fiction writer, I like the collaborative experience in that one. I asked, have you ever used merchandise? This one was a simple yes or no. Again, I wasn't expecting the outcome of this, but more than half said yes. 58.9% have used merch. What I asked, what did you use and did it help you accomplish your goals? This one was optional. The vast majority who answered used it to connect to beings from their chosen pop culture source, especially deities. Quite a few use it on altars and as iconography, with the biggest trend specifically being figures. There were several jewelry mentions, such as enchanting pins as protective words, two specific mentions of pins of the eye from the Magnus archives, and I don't know enough about TMA to know what that means, but it was so highly specific that now I'm curious. And someone said they used a Kesha candle, like Kesha the singer, and I think that's fantastic. There was a second part of the question too, did it help you accomplish your goals? And every single person who answered said it did. So people are finding usefulness and help with this. I asked, do you celebrate any dates or holidays from pop culture, such as seasonal festivals, dates something was released, or a character's birthday? 
The options were yes, no, and only sometimes. I got a pretty even split between yes and no. 38.9% said yes, 35.8% said no, and 25.3% said only sometimes. I asked what events they celebrated and if it was sentimental, sacred, or just for fun. I was delighted to find I'm not the only one who celebrates things where the exact dates aren't listed in the canon, but both me and Oscar used the day that the media aired on TV as the date they celebrated. Same hat, my friend. Probably two-thirds or half said it's just for fun. We're out here living our best PCP lives. I love it. Birthdays were mentioned at least 20 times. Also quite a few mentions of release dates. Canonical holidays was less common than I expected, with about 25% of the responses citing celebrations from the source. Interestingly, three of those responses specifically mentioned the summoning days from the Elder Scrolls games. I asked, purely out of curiosity, have you ever tried reality shifting? This was a basic yes or no, I made it optional, but everyone except one person responded anyways. Three-fourths, almost on the dot, said no, with 25.5% saying yes. So I guess it's a pretty common practice in this circle. I asked if they wanted to, to tell me about that experience with it. I was totally indulging my own curiosity with this question and left it fully open-ended. Apparently there's a lot of overlap with astral travel and lucid dreaming. I'm not entirely sure which way it's supposed to go myself, but there's a very strong divide amongst the survey respondents. A lot of people compared it to astral projection, and a lot of people said it's very different. This response kind of indicates to me that there's no overarching correct way to do it, though, um, because Gabby shared that they found that most information on TikTok wasn't reliable, so I did my research on other sources instead. I also learned that you can come with your own method for shifting and that you don't have to use a method at all. All right, cool, so it's completely personalized. And then this is the section where I asked about their beliefs and how pop culture, paganism, and magic is thought to work according to the survey respondents. Again, this is completely subjective, but I like to look at the different ways that people experience the world and their theories behind it. So this was personally very interesting for me. I asked, how do you believe pop culture's effect on your life works? Select all that apply. The most common response was it works differently for different people with 85.3% of people checking that one. The second least common response I provided still got almost half of the responses. The world in the media exists somewhere and you tap into it. We got just over 40% selecting that one. The least common answer with only four of 95% checking it was I don't believe it impacts my life. The last question on the survey asked for respondents to share any further thoughts or theories, and this was an optional long-form answer. There were a lot of mentions of being the character and pop culture paganism being a way to reconnect with that lifetime, which is something that I've been experiencing myself in recent years. Um, I know for me as Blue Diamond, having memories of someone I lost was incredibly important to me, so I did workings to kind of bring those memories back and help me remember what had happened and what she meant to me. There were six separate mentions of parallel universes and dimensions playing into it. Multiple answers discussing pop culture entities as concepts that come into being or are giving power through your belief in them. And Lou Jane said, it's a way to take the seriousness out of traditional practices and instead do something more personal because fandoms are personal and that is more flexible and creative. I really like that answer. It's definitely part of why I see a lot of people doing it. Lex called it a very useful exercise in exploring the roots of spirituality. It's a pr pure form of belief. We see a character and we love them so much that we are compelled to turn that love into action, into ritual and offering, with no expectations for ourselves. It's all about love in the end. And then someone said, who is to say that it's not real? Just because it's not some ancient practice doesn't mean it doesn't work or have any real substance. And I thought this would be a fitting note to finish on. One of our respondents brought up some books that they draw from. <coughs> including the How Pop Culture Magic Works series by Taylor Elwood, and also the Pop Culture Magic Grimoires, also by Taylor Elwood, and other various authors for basic ideas and frameworks. And that's about all I got for today. So it looks like we have 
10 minutes left and I see a lot of people uh, were talking amongst themselves during this panel and finding people who share their source and that's absolutely awesome. I love to see this kind of community. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ping me. Um, any questions, any commentary, if you'd like to share experiences, I'd like to see what those come from. <coughs> Let's see, Dervish asked, I kind of missed it. Was that type of belief talked about in the survey? Egregores. Um, it was an option in the survey when I asked what elements of pop culture practices people use, but it wasn't very commonly selected, so I didn't include it in the results. Uh, will the results of the survey be posted? I suppose I can. Um, does anyone have any ideas on where I should post that? I can put together a Google results. Um, I know I have a spreadsheet for it. OK. Um, truth be told, this is my first time using Google Forms. So I will have to play around with it and figure out how to get the results, but I can get those to you very, very soon. And I'll probably post them in the panel to chat. Let's see, I see some questions in the questions channel. In the case your source is based or in fact reflection of this world's religious slash spiritual beliefs, how will that interact? That's one of those things where it's going to be different between different people. If your source is based on this world, you probably won't see as much resistance or people bad-mouthing your practices or experiences as you will with a so-called fictional religion. Um, how it interacts is going to be entirely based on your beliefs and where they blend into each other and, of course, how you interact with the practice yourself. T. Roar asks, I got to get prepped for my art stream, but I'll ask, is there a way to incorporate pop culture into real world beliefs? I'm Norse pagan, but want to incorporate the beliefs of my source into it without causing a fuss. There absolutely is a way to do it. I, like I said, I'm an eclectic witch. I'm an eclectic pagan. I kind of pick and choose what resonates with me from various belief systems and my own personal experience. And Norse paganism is something that's not incredibly, like it, it has a very thorough mythology if you read the Eddas, but it doesn't necessarily have a strict rigid structure. So I could very easily see you incorporating elements of beliefs and how the world was built and how you think the world acts beyond those creation myths. Um, it's, it's absolutely something you could do for sure causing a fuss in the Norse pagan community, that might be a different story. But within yourself, it's just a matter of kind of introspecting and maybe trial and error to figure out what works best for you and where you want to blend the elements together. You're welcome. Would you consider celebrating fandom holidays, such as character birthdays, the creation date of a particular piece of media, etc., without necessarily working with specific characters to count as pop culture practice? I'm curious, since for me, Homestuck fandom holidays are as important as Jewish ones. Yeah, I would absolutely consider that a practice. Um, it might be more of the secular practices that I was talking about if it's not based on any, I don't know much about Homestuck, so I don't know if there's a religion involved in that or not. But yeah, for sure. If it's important to you, then I would consider it a practice. If it's something that you regularly follow up on and act on or something that you have incorporated into your belief system, absolutely. Oh, okay. Um, Orion Scribner says, let's put links to those survey results and any transcript of their, this lecture into our Google Docs where everyone can take notes on the other kin panels. Um, is that something that everyone has access to? Can I edit that?
All right, let's see. We've got some more questions coming in. If Discord will load, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. I know this probably makes no sense. Uh, Trees are in coast says, but what about a non-direct belief of a world rather than a person? Example being Gensokyo from Toho. Does it count on this if it gives comfort in the chance of going in? Even if 90 to 95% of the community is saying it doesn't exist, despite being in the game lore, it doesn't exist to anyone in this reality. So I wonder if it's an acceptable thing to think about if I would die. I would say it's probably in line with any other belief about the afterlife or a belief in a world. Worldviews tend to be something that even within a religion, if it's large enough, can vary dramatically between people. Um, the extent to which they take certain moral teachings or the extent to which a certain deity demands a certain kind of worship. Um, I'm not familiar with the particular thing you mentioned, but I would say it counts if you have a belief in it and it affects your life and it's something that you take comfort in. Uh, absolutely. Do you, th uh, Azura asks, do you think that it would count as something like this if you prioritize something that you prioritized in a previous life in your source? For, the, for example, in my source, I was obsessed with a certain aspect of the human spirit slash human experience, and now I tend to focus on it still, although I make sure not to get as obsessed with it as I was back then. I relate to you on that, um, particularly with, uh, I, I was honestly a zealot in a past life, and I'm trying to make sure I don't become one again in this life. Um, but yeah, if you prioritize something that you prioritized in your source, then it, it would depend on probably what you do with it. Um, having a belief or enjoying an experience, yeah, sure, it can be a, part, a secular practice. Um, if you don't necessarily do magic or religion involved with it, I wouldn't say it necessarily counts as pop culture paganism or witchcraft. But yeah, something like a worldview or um, philosophies, as I mentioned, uh, those could absolutely be a part of it. Is it possible to mix fictotype beliefs? Uh, the Analog Pantheon asks, also, what could be the guidelines or milestones to create your own pop culture practices? There are so many ways to do that, honestly. I would say, for me, I know the easiest way is to start with the source and I use a lot of meditation in my experience um, just to help explore things. And when I'm in that altered trance state, I can think more clearly. I have ADHD. I have myriad mental health issues. So I don't always think very clearly when I'm like fully conscious. But as far as mixing fictotype beliefs, yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, if they're all part of who you are, then your beliefs can be that way too. Bo of Artemis says, hello, follower of Bast, Mahis, and Sekhmet, paladin, devotee of Bast, and Dungeons and Dragons fictive. How would you suggest I feel more like a paladin in a world where such a thing does not exist? Honestly, I'm not familiar enough with Dungeons and Dragons uh, roles, I guess, to know how specifically to suggest things. But I would say find ways that you could do things in that kind of fictotype, or not fictotype, I'm sorry, uh, ways that you could do that in your experience in this world as well. Um, I know paladins have some kind of religious belief, right? Like they get their power from a god. Um, I would say that you can incorporate any rituals that you may have memories of or any kind of specific trinkets or items that you remember from your quests. Um, you could try to find analogs to those in this world. Uh, Koru asks, do you have any advice for someone on the other side of the fence? Someone who was worshipped as a god back in their source and found that it was important to them, even if they didn't necessarily feel they deserved it. Ooh, um, if it's important to you, I would say, oh gosh, it's going to be hard to find followers in this life, isn't it? Um, I would say it's probably ideal to try to tap into your memories 
and you know things like journaling and exploring and uh, writing down things that you remember or cert maybe certain people you remember or certain rituals um, if you can recreate them in any way for yourself I firmly believe that I, I believe in multiverse theory and I believe that time and space are not hard concepts um, so if you build something in this world that had power in your world you could perhaps access that same sense of worship and whatever energy you got from people in your source that could perhaps bring back memories or bring back that feeling of you know having an important valuable part of your life in this world as well you're welcome Okay, so my time for the panel has run out, but if people are okay with it, I wouldn't mind uh, continuing chatting, and anyone is welcome to DM me. Um, I posted my Tumblr and I believe the social media channel, but uh, you can DM me here. I think my DMs are open to anybody. Um, Zira, hashtag 1551, Zira Shield rather. Um, hashtag 1551 and on tumblr my kin stuff is on blackwinged-soul.tumblr.com oh you know what dervish brings up a good point it might not be the best idea to ask for worship in this life um that could definitely lead to like cultish things i know exactly what dervish means um, focusing inwardly on that might work a little better, but it's not something our system has a lot of experience with. That's a very good point. My doves are talking. Zero, what's your Tumblr again? Here, I'll put it, um, let me grab a link real quick. This is my Tumblr. There's that. Blackwings-soul.tumblr.com Well, you can continue asking your question if you'd like, Lapori. I see several people are typing. <laughs> yeah, Kat, I used to tell myself that I wasn't other kin for years before I figured out that I am, in fact, uh, other kin as hell. Oh, that's so cool, Jasper. Um, my altars have gathered dust and cobwebs and everything else, so I know exactly how that goes. And to everyone thanking me, you are absolutely welcome. <laughs> yeah the doves are doves said the burbs sound like flutes they're diamond doves they kind of sound like kazoos in person but it is a very soft gentle kind of kazoo love says they love you but she loves you 
All right, let's see, there's another question. Um, I typed this in chat, but I'm curious about your perspective too. Something hit me. What about pop culture paganism, but from factual sources? Is that a common thing you've heard of? Things like popular animal archetypes. Uh, I have a quasi-spiritual slash philosophical inspiration connection with popular stereotype slash archetypes regarding my stereotype, Bonobos, uh, including associating real world deities and symbolism with it. Venus, Aphrodite, similar things. It just dawned on me that it's somewhat similar to all this. It's not from fiction, but it's taken from pop culture in a sense, but factual pop culture. I hope I have time for this. It's a bit long. Well, long story short, I'd say it doesn't necessarily count as pop culture, um, more because archetypes are something that's present in a vast array of things that are both within and outside of pop culture. Um, I would say that the association of deities from other practices probably brings it more in line with their archetypes than a pop culture archetype. Um, pop culture is generally pretty much fiction. Um, factual pop culture is more like just mythology or another religious belief, I'd say. But that's just my take on it. Honestly, you're going to know your experience way better than anyone else is. And if it relates to you, I would say maybe it's worth exploring. <laughs> I got me too interested in dabbling in these practices. Best of luck to you. All right, if nobody else has any questions, I'm probably going to hop off the stage, but I can hang around and chat. Um, feel free to ping me if anything else comes up. Uh, I will get to work on figuring out how to post those survey results, and I'll be sure to share the link with everybody. So thank you so much for attending, everyone, and have a great OtherCon 2022.